what's going on guys it's omniarch and today i'm bringing you a brand new video where i'm going to be giving you my updated beginner's guide to rise of kingdoms so this video is long overdue my most popular rise of kingdoms video is my beginner's guide that i posted all the way back in january and the game has changed a lot in the last year and i've also learned a ton the last 10 months since i made that video so get comfortable because i have eight points that i want to talk about in this video that should get you started as a brand new player everything that you need to know so grab a drink put this on one and a half times speed whatever you have to do to get through this information because it is crucial but before we get started i just want to say i'm not a sponsored content creator for rise of kingdoms but i do post a ton of rise of kingdoms content on this youtube channel so if this is the first video of mine that you're seeing make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified of the next one now the first point that i want to make is setting your expectations as a brand new free to play or low spender yes you can still really enjoy this game as a free to play or low spender and i imagine 90 percent or more of you that are watching probably fall into that category you're going to be able to participate in war by reinforcing your kingdom and alliances uh, rallies on enemy objectives uh, by reinforcing your flags and forts and cities you're also going to be able to fight a little bit in the open field with a few marches in an event called called kvk this is kingdom versus kingdom it's an event that lasts around 45 50 days it's a massive event that comes around once every three months or so and that's kind of the holy grail of events in this game that's what kingdoms uh, and players typically focus on when it comes to massive open field war and uh, fighting also as a free to play and low spender you're you're going to be helping the t5 or the top tier players with the gold cost in this game uh gold is difficult to come by at the end game but you'll have an abundance of it in the early game and so until you reach that end game uh you may find yourself in a position where you can really help out those that are uh, sacrificing the most in in these wars you're also going to be able to have a lot of fun with your alliance members in events like arc of osiris or Ceroli crisis and ian's ballads these are all events that are really fun that come around periodically once every week or two uh and uh, you don't have to be a pay to win whale to enjoy these events these are really fun events that i play every single week and with that said again you do not have to spend money in this game to really enjoy it of course if you do decide to spend money then you will be able to progress a little bit faster and you may be able to get access to a lot of commanders that that are pretty restricted for a low spender or a free to play player the next thing i want to address is should you start over right because there's probably going to be a lot of things in this video that if you're a new player and you've been playing for a week or two and you know you, you start watching this video and you realize that you've messed up you've messed up a lot of things should you start over um i would say that you know a lot of the mistakes that you might uh, come across that I that I discussed in this video can be fixed in a shorter amount of time than it would take to restart if you are uh, over like 5 million power already then um, you know restarting might be a, a longer way to fix it than just continuing on with that account if you're considering restarting but not sure if you should give up on your main account then you can make a farm account which is a second city that you would be working on and the purpose of that city is to gather resources collect as many resources as you can to send to your main account and you can create this farm account and do everything right with that account and if you get lucky with gold keys and events and things like that then maybe you can consider focusing and making the farm account your main if your main is still like i said a relatively low power either way i think making at least one farm account is a good idea if you have a lot of time to invest in this game because you're in the early game getting your city hall up to city hall 25 is going to require a ton of resources not only for building but also for research and having a second account account there to supplement your main account with with more resources is not only going to help you get there but it will help you aid your alliance and kingdom during war now with all of the expectations being set let's talk about what the best kingdom is going to be right and if you guys don't know uh you can actually change your kingdom in this game and when 
when I say kingdom, I essentially mean server. There are different servers in this game. Uh, they are ordered in continents of eight kingdoms, right? Uh, so these are the eight. I'm in 1643, but you can scroll all the way back and you can see that the very first kingdom is 1001 kingdom of Galloway. And you can scroll all the way down and discover that we are over 2000 servers uh, strong in rise of kingdoms, almost 2100. The best kingdom to migrate to is not necessarily the most powerful kingdom. In fact, the top 32 kingdoms ranked by top 100 players in each kingdom. Uh, those are called Imperium and you cannot just move your account there if you're over I think 25 million or something like that um, those kingdoms are very competitive and very difficult to have a meaningful role in in fact your best bet if you're just starting the game right now is to start your um, account in the newest possible kingdom so right now that would be 2084 the reason that this would be the best kingdom to start in um, is because there is a an event that happens only at the beginning of a server that will last for I think either five or seven days that gives you a ton of speed ups resources sculptures for ca uh, commanders all sorts of really great stuff absolutely for free just by starting in that kingdom and then shortly after that of the beginning of the kingdom there's an event that comes around uh that for a commander called lohar so i'm going to go in here and show you lohar uh, he is one of the commanders in this game of the epic tier and lohar plays a really important role in leveling up all of your other commanders that you see here on the left the max level is 60 uh, and lohar gives you 70 percent extra experience bonus with this third skill at five points so Lohar is important to obtain early game because you're going to be using him to level up your commanders for the rest of your playtime. And again, if you start in a new kingdom, this first Lohar event comes around very, very quickly. You also can switch your kingdom at a later date. So you can migrate your account to a different kingdom using passport pages. These can be obtained in two different ways at the time of recording this. Uh, the first one is by purchasing a bundle um, for five dollars, uh, or you can purchase even more than that called New World. It comes with one passport page. The amount of passport pages you need to migrate increases with your power, which you can see in the top left corner. You can also obtain passport pages for free by joining an, joining an alliance and buying them from your alliance shop. There are none in my shop right now, but this is where they would be if you wanted to restock them. So start your account in a brand new kingdom kingdom and then later down the line you can transfer or migrate your account to a kingdom that is a better fit for you i did just recently post a video uh, with a collaboration with another rise of kingdoms youtuber where we talk about uh, the best ways to determine if a kingdom is a good fit for you so if you are curious about that later down the line reference that video and it should help you out a lot finding a good kingdom that you can migrate to or just stay in your current kingdom but if you are going to migrate it's better to do that earlier than later because again passport pages the requirement goes up as you get more powerful but you want to make sure that the kingdom that you're investing your time in uh, organizes events that will allow you to play in like Ark of Osiris for example or uh, have a low chance of a civil war because civil wars in this game uh, are very detrimental to your performance in big events like kingdom versus kingdom always remember diplomacy is key when it comes to finding the right fit next let's talk about the best civilization that you should pick when you're first starting in rise of kingdoms you can see here that i am france previously i was spain in the last video when i made uh, the original guide if you're just starting out then i would recommend starting as either france or as britain um, I personally prefer France, but I know a lot of players suggest Britain. The reason for these picks is twofold, uh, primarily the starting commander. So whichever, whichever civilization you pick, you will uh, get the epic commander on screen. Um, I think Joan of Arc is much better than Boudicca in the long run. And you're going to be getting free sculptures of these commanders as you move forward and progress your account. And I think that Boudicca's usability falls off very fast, even though she does have a very crucial early game role. Um, I recommend starting as France. Now, if you've already created your account and you've already picked a different civilization, um, you can switch your civilization with an item called the civilization change. I actually don't have one, but I can show you one in the shop here. This is called the civilization change. You get one of these items for free uh at i believe city hall 10 but it could be city hall 12 it's somewhere in that range there uh, but you get one for free so 
don't worry if you did not pick france or britain um you can change later if you pick china china is also a really great choice because of sun tzu but i think early 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 game in your first couple of weeks france and britain are your best choices joan of arc is going to help you gather a lot more resources a lot quicker in the early game and boudica is going to help you level up your commanders a little bit faster as well both are important it's whichever one you want i prefer france and i'm still france here in the late game now it's worth noting that the civilization that you start with again you can change it so it's not a big deal if you messed if you messed this up um, i would save your civilization change until city hall 24 ish uh, because around that time is when you're really going to have a better understanding of the game and your role in the game and then you'll be able to make the decision for which civilization you want to stick with uh, and also by waiting a little bit longer you could have the chance of of the developers implementing more civilizations into the game and you'll have a chance of switching to those for free with that civilization switch item those are really expensive okay point number five has to do with how you should be focusing on your commander so the first thing that i have to get a, get out of the way immediately is do not bring any of your legendary or epic commanders past their first star unless their first skill has five points in it they are a gatherer like joan of arc or cleopatra or sunduk or ashida or they're going to be mainly used for leveling up your other commanders like Boudica and Lohar. Almost all of the time, 90% of the time, you're going to want to leave these commanders, again, epics and legendaries, at a single star. What does that mean? If you guys don't know what stars are, the stars indicate which skills are unlocked. When you get a brand new commander, I'll show you one of mine, you get a brand new commander they are at one star with only their first skill unlocked and in 90 percent of the instances this skill is going to be your most important skill and so what you want to do is level up your commander to level 10 do not take them to any further star points right and in order to do that i can show you here um to get past level 10 you have to add uh, these star upgrade materials to boost their star level okay do not do that keep your commanders at level 10 or below with a single star until you get this skill to five the reason that this is important is because not only is this first skill the most powerful for most commanders but skills are added in a random form or fashion so for example if we look at a commander that is four stars you can see all four of their skills are unlocked if i add a skill point right now to my commander called kiera then the skill that gets upgraded could either be her second third or fourth skill because her first skill is already maxed five is the max so at this point there's a 33 percent chance that if i add a skill to her that it goes to her second there's a 33 percent chance that it goes to her third there's a 33 percent chance that it goes to her fourth if you take a commander past the first star without maxing out this first skill then every following skill point that you add will be randomly distributed amongst these and we've already established that for most commanders this first skill is the best one and you want it to be at five points now this is most important for legendary commanders because epic commanders you're going to eventually expertise all of them right you can see that i have all these expertise but legendary commanders are incredibly difficult to fix if you've already messed up their skill distribution so this is crucial for legendaries and optimal for epics you totally can fix an epic very hard to fix a legendary without a huge investment next we're going to talk about the order with which you should be investing in your epic commanders what do i mean when i say investing in well it does take experience to level up your commanders it also takes stars to get them to the next star level it also requires sculptures to increase each skill a good example of this is kiera i need 40 kiera sculptures to add an additional skill point to her now for most epic commanders kiera excluded for most epic commanders you can use what's called universal commander sculptures so if i hit this plus here and hit universal sculpture i have 3192 universal epic commander sculptures you can invest these universal uh, commander sculptures into 
any epic that you have unlocked already first i would recommend getting Boudica to 5511 uh her second skill is going to help you get experience for all the other commanders on this list which is why i recommend doing her first uh, you don't need to expertise her right now which is why we're going to stop there for now the second commander that i would recommend investing in is getting joan of arc to five five one one uh this is going to get the second skill to five which is going to help you gather a much faster for any type of resource that you might need in the early game which is important and uh, the reason that we're not bringing her to expertise right now is because you are going to continue getting sculptures of her by doing your main quests which you can find right here on the left side of the screen uh, you can see i don't have any left because i'm at the end game but uh, you'll get her for free if you picked france as your starting civilization and uh, that's why we're leaving her at 5511 for now because next we're going to focus on getting matilda to 5511 i think she is the third investment that you should be making her second skill at five is going to help you gather the stone that you need to get your wall and your tavern uh, up to those higher levels which you're going to need a lot of um she's a really really great uh, gathering commander after you've got matilda to 5511 you're then going to expertise sun tzu meaning you're going to put all of your heads into sun tzu until you get his expertise skill unlocked sun tzu is going to be an insanely good pvp and pve commander that you can also put on the garrison in your city your garrison is your wall right here these are the commanders that defend your wall if it gets attacked once you've expertise sun tzu i would then go back and start expertising matilda uh, the reason that we did sun tzu first is because that gives you at least one commander that you can use really effectively in the open fields also for expedition sunset canyon etc uh, but then we want to go back and focus on matilda finish her off because her expertise is insanely good this is the same as the fourth skill on constance so if you send constance and matilda to an, an alliance resource node you're going to be getting 20 percent extra resources which if you're gathering a million or two million or three million resources it adds up very very fast so expertise matilda next i know that might sound controversial because she's a uh, very like a one trick pony but this expertise is insanely good the sooner you get it the better once you do that you'll probably have joan of arc close to expertise uh because you'll be just playing the game doing those main quests uh, i would then finish her off i think she should be the next epic commander that you should expertise because her expertise skill is so versatile and so powerful for uh helping your allies in uh kvk and open field fighting plus she's very good in sunset canyon because of this expertise skill so absolutely expertise her next then i would probably focus on commanders like pelagius and bybars for your cavalry march i would then focus probably on scipio as a tangy commander for your joan of arc i would then focus probably on kusunoki and on uh ulji for your sunset canyon team those are in really no order after Joan of Arc you can really do them in pretty much any order but those are just some of the best ones that come uh, to mind top of my brain those are really great now I also made a separate video talking about the order with which I think you should uh, invest in legendary commanders as a free to play or a low spender um, you can check that out if you want a full guide but just to keep it really short and sweet uh, I would say if you're in a brand new kingdom your first wheel of fortune is going to have Richard the first I would summon him from that wheel if you're a free to play or low spender if you're a big spender I would spin that wheel a decent amount uh, then I would recommend expertising Yi Song Ye. He will come around on the next round of Wheel of Fortune. So Wheel of Fortune is a, an event where you can spend premium currency, which in this game is gems, and you can spin the Wheel of Fortune and there's a chance that you will get sculptures of an exclusive commander. Yi Song Ye is the second wheel. He is the first legendary that I would recommend investing all of your legendary commander sculptures into until they are completely expertise, right? And expertise just for people who don't know what that means uh the first four skills are unlocked with the first four um stars the final skill is unlocked only after the first four skills are at five and completely maxed out so it's very it's a very a, a big investment to get a legendary commander to expertise once you summon them it takes 690 legendary commander sculptures in order to do so um it's crazy how many how long it's going to take so Isong is a huge investment but i do recommend him because of his high damage aoe and uh he also is good on your wall to defend your city after you've expertised Isong, i would go back and get richard the first to five five one one 
that would make him pretty uh, tanky in the open field. And then after that, I would recommend getting Alexander the Great from his respective uh, Wheel of Fortune. And I would expertise Alexander the Great at that point. He is an incredible second commander to have expertise. Again, if you want more information on what to do after that, check out my video. I talk about this exact thing. The last point that I want to touch on in the commander section is the expedition metal store. Uh, the epic commander here will rotate every single week. The blue commander is going to stay as constants forever. And at the time of recording this, uh, the legendary commander is going to stay as Ethel fled forever. When you're investing your medals that you can see up in the top that you get from doing expedition, which is the single player campaign where you go ahead and you fight against the enemy, I would recommend getting Constance first before Ethel fled. And this is important. I would get Constance to uh, one, five, five, five. That first skill can be whatever you want it to be, but her second, third and fourth skill are the best skills that she has because you're never going to use Constance to fight another player. You're never going to use Constance in PVE or expedition or anything like that. Cause her first skill is completely useless. Her second skill is amazing. And her fourth skill is incredible, super good for a gathering commander. Her third skill is just decent, but Constance is going to be one of the best gatherers for you because of these three skills here, primarily the second two. So I would recommend getting those, the second, third and fourth skill of Constance all the way to five with your medals. Once you finish that, then I would start purchasing Ethelfled sculptures. Now this is important. You want to be able to keep at least 2,500 or 5,000 ideally of these medals in reserves. So anything beyond that is what you should be spending on ethel fled every day you can only get three of her every single day you do want to expertise her as fast as possible because she is a free to play legendary she's very very good you want to get her quick but again the reason we focus on constance first is because in the early game you're not gonna really have enough medals to buy a lot of her every day anyway and getting constance up to a very high skill level is going to be crucial for gathering a significant amount of resources from your alliance plots and that's what's going to help you progress your account much faster than if you were to focus on ethel fled first um, again this is if you guys want to debate this you can but again i would keep at least 2500 uh, or 5000 of these medals in reserves in case a legendary from the gold keys shows up they cost 2500 it's very rare that they show up here but you want to have reserve medals just in case because they're very different difficult to get uh sculptures of these legendaries uh, again i have my constant gathering right now and seriously her uh importance cannot be uh understood fully as a brand new player she is her, the extra 10 percent that you're gonna get from her last skill is just it adds up over time and the sooner you have it at five the better the bigger her load the more sh uh the more she can collect from these mother loads she's seriously focus on her first it's going to be really quick to get her to zero five 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 or one five 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 whatever it turns out to be seriously consider that seriously point number six is going to be your goals in the early game okay the goals in the early game what should you be doing what should you be focusing on doing in what order uh in the early game of rise of kingdoms the first thing that you want to notice is your vip level you want to push to VIP six as fast as you realistically can. Okay. You're going to get VIP every single day just by logging in. You're also going to get VIP from your Alliance members making purchases with real money in the game. You also can make purchases with real money to get your VIP a little bit higher, um, but you can get to VIP six as a free to play really, really, really easy. Uh, and the reason for this is because this is the only way to unlock a second building queue permanently. And you do want to have a second building queue up pretty much all the time. And so VIP six is your first focus in the early game. Once you've done that, uh, or as you're doing that, you want to be focusing on getting your city hall to level 25 as fast as possible. In other games, it makes sense to level up all of your cities equally at the same time the shop doesn't level up um your wall your watchtower etc uh, in other games you want to do it all evenly 
in this game you want to focus on getting your city hall to 25 as soon as possible so in order to do that there's going to be other prerequisites to do that so i can hop over to a different account to show you in order to go from city hall level 20 to 21 i first have to get my wall to level 20 and in order to get my wall to level 20 uh, i also have to make sure that my tavern is level 20. and so there are certain buildings that you will be forced to upgrade before your city hall that's okay uh and then while you're doing those really big upgrades right for example this is going to take over two days um now i will have alliance helps on top of that but it will take two days to do that while you're doing that if you have an open queue and you have extra resources then you can start focusing on your uh, resource production buildings and other things like your hospital and things along those lines getting your city hall to 25 is going to require a ton of resources and that's where the farm account that i talked about earlier is going to help a lot you're also gonna need a ton of stone for this wall so keep that in mind in order to get all those resources i would recommend leveling up your gathering commanders first before pretty much anybody else to level 40. so you don't really want to bring your gatherers to level 60. i can show you here my matilda is level 40 my sarka my constance gaius they're all level 40. the reason for this is because level 40 is when you get the fifth star that will allow you to put all the talent points into the gathering tree which is crucial now theoretically you do not you don't need all of the talent points in the gathering tree you uh, do not need the tourniquet you don't need the two points in defense you don't necessarily need the modified axle however this march speed is going to be crucial for getting to and from resource nodes and time is resources essentially so um i recommend getting to 40 but technically you could stop at 37 and you should be fine um but again i would recommend getting to 40 and then bringing them up to that fifth star so you just have an abundance of talent points to fill all this out for all of your gatherers focusing on gatherers first is crucial and i know a lot of you are probably thinking that this is a controversial recommendation it is not it is important that your gatherers are level 40 first because the sooner that they are at the that's when they're done right gatherers at level 40 are done you don't have to work on them ever again for the rest of the time that you play the game so the sooner you get them there the sooner that you get the maximum benefits out of their gathering skills right from from level 40 you can just level up the rest of their skills as you get the sculptures from keys or other events you need them at level 40 okay um i would first invest in my universal blue sculptures which you don't get a lot of those i would invest them first into constance because she is only available from the metal store there's no use for those blue sculptures otherwise invest them all into her after that i would invest them into sarka then i would recommend putting them into gaius marius and then if you want you could do like uh lancelot and and Timo. it doesn't matter at that point once you get all your gatherers to level 40 then you can start focusing on the important epic commanders and legendary commanders again like sun tzu joan of arc honestly is probably going to be one of the first commanders you get to 40 because she's a gatherer and a pvp and a pve commander she's just incredible she's one of the best commanders in the epic tier like for sure and then as you get your legendary commanders first skill to five just from the gold keys then you could bring them up to two stars and use them experience there another early game goal to remember is to spend down your action points as much as you can right now you're gonna see I have a ridiculous amount because I accidentally used all uh, a ton of action point potions here I used like 10 of these 1000s by accident it was a total mistake worst mistake ever but these action points regenerate over time and you're gonna need these action points to attack barbarians and barbarian forts out in the open field uh, let me see if I can pull one of those up for you that's what they look like here um, doing this is going to get you and your alliance a lot of rewards uh, by your alliance I mean barbarian forts get your alliance rewards and killing barbs gets you rewards the uh, the rewards for the forts come in the form of trophies that you can see here doing them increase your treasure of crystal whatever color it is you get this periodically it gets you good loot for free which is excellent so as your ap is regenerating over time make sure you spend it down and get the maximum amount of rewards from them because your barbarians can get you some gems some speed ups these arrows of resistance are crucial to getting to end game and you can only get them from a couple of places barbarians are going to be your best friend when it comes to doing so when your ap is completely diminished you want to send out as many gatherers as you can 
all the time you should always be using and and I'm, I'm obviously violating this rule right now because i'm recording a video but you should have all five of your army slots being used at all times so if you're not killing barbs and you're not uh rallying forts or fighting in pvp whatever you should have all of your gatherers out all the time the more you gather the quicker you'll be able to level up your uh, tavern and your wall and thus your city hall you will need resources forever always you'll always need resources there's no such thing as too many resources so always 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 gather when it comes to your academy your goals should be primarily focused on economic technology at first uh, masonry is really good for building speed focus on that writing is incredible for research speed so focus on that as well engineering is incredible for building speed and again mathematics is incredible for research speed you also want to go for machinery eventually as well when you get there economic technology is just going to make getting resources much faster and once you have a lot of resources you can push your account much farther and then focus more on military technology now you will have to focus on military technology a little bit at least in the early game because you will want to push as far as you can into the expedition we'll talk about that in a little bit in a second as far as uh early game goals when it comes to resource tokens and speed up items this is what i mean when i say resource tokens these resources are in the form of items and they cannot be stolen if my city gets attacked if you guys didn't know these resources up top can be stolen if your city gets hit while you're offline so keep your items in token form keep your speed ups in token form until a big event comes around like mightiest governor you can use all of your resources and speed ups in one event and get huge payoffs for it you do want to be very careful and know that you have a solid chance of winning if you're going to go ahead and do that also if you find yourself in the middle of a war or in kvk you'll have a stockpile of uh, resources and speed ups to heal your troops you should not be using universal speed ups to heal your troops until you are t5 pretty much uh, but it's still save all that stuff just in case another early game goal should be focusing on expedition and pushing as far as you can level 80 is going to require probably t5 right uh, if not you need uh, insanely good commanders as a t4 with a ton of buffs so make sure you push as far into this as you can the reason for this is because if you three star an event or an, an expedition level you will immediately get the number of medals that you would get for completing it automatically every single day uh, without having to do it again so again three star as many as you can because every day you're going to get those medals from those um from those expedition levels which you can then use to get constants and then ultimately ethel fled which is you want to expertise her as fast as you can you also get ethel fled from these little side missions so make sure you do those as well you'll get the treasure of the warrior queen these are incredibly good you'll get silver keys gold keys sometimes epic sculptures mostly you're going to get silver keys or ethel fled from this and again ethel fled is great you also want to push as far as you can into sunset canyon every single week sunset canyon is an auto battler mode where you establish five armies and your armies will automatically fight to the death against your enemies five armies there are daily rewards for ranking highly here there are also weekly rewards which are called season rewards for ranking highly here and these rewards add up over time they're going to be very good for free to play and low spenders and just by fighting people every single day using all of your uh challenge chances you get seven per day plus a golden ticket if you do your dailies um you will be able to get a lot of different equipment and things like that so push sunset canyon every single day at least use all of your attempts it's it's vital and finally an early game goal for you should be to participate in as many events as you can so you see here we have clarion call we have training day we have fort siege these are all events that are crucial for you to participate in especially arc of osiris these events are going to get you a ton of free stuff but there's an emphasis on karak ceremony that's an event that will get you free universal sculptures either epics or legendary depending on how far you can go there's also an event called golden kingdom which is, is a single player event that will get you a lot of good rewards you also will have events for holidays so we have uh, halloween coming up we have christmas coming up um new year's these are all uh, times of the year where the game developers imp uh, game developers implement really cool uh holiday events that get you a lot of free stuff so always do 
the events that you can hear uh, every single day, every single week, because that's how you're going to progress your account much faster than players who ignore them and don't do them. It's important to know that you can increase your VIP with gems and spending these gems to push the next VIP level should primarily be done during an event called more than gems, which is actually happening right now. This event will give you amazing rewards for spending gems that you may have already been wanting to spend anyway. So when this event comes around, this is the time that you should be investing gems into VIP or buying what's called books of the covenant which you're going to need in order to upgrade your castle which you're going to need to upgrade your academy another really important early game goal should be to find yourself in one of the top alliances in your kingdom in terms of power and activity this is vital for your progression in the game as a free to play or low spender or even as a well um, your alliance will give you alliance helps which will speed up your upgrades your research your buildings your healing uh, everything gets speed up, sped up when you are a part of an alliance so you want to be in an alliance that has active members because in order to get these alliance helps there has to be people online to click the help button so go into kingdom chat do some networking you know work on your diplomacy try to find your way into one of the top alliances in your kingdom because not only are you going to get um, these 30 helps much faster in a in a popular and active alliance but it'll also increase the amount of gifts that you get from your alliance members making purchases these are all purchases that other alliance members made I didn't spend a dime and I got three gold keys I got you know 15 hours of speed ups this is crazy good stuff that I get just for being in an active powerful alliance so again this is crucial the seventh point I want to talk about are just some best practices that you should be doing as you're playing the game so if you're going to be doing a significant building upgrade or a significant research at the academy you want to grab an appropriate rune runes drop at holy sites right here i'm at the lost temple which is and i'll zoom out the very center of the map you can see in the top corner here uh, but most of the um, diamond or crystal type structures that you can see on the map here so there's this one there's this one there's this one there's this one these are all what's called holy sites okay um, they're either altars sanctuaries or sanctums whatever they will spawn guardians twice a day killing these guardians gets you an insane amount of experience for zero AP and at when they die they drop a rune and those runes can give you insanely good buffs for progressing your account okay you want to make sure that you use uh, an appropriate rune pretty much all the time it's good to grab ones for gathering if you're not upgrading anything but you want to make sure that you get one for big building upgrades and big research upgrades this is the best practice you should always do in a similar vein you want to make sure that you ask your kingdom for an appropriate title when making a big upgrade of building or research uh, some of these titles are in insanely good so for example architect gives you 10% building speed and you only need to have the title for the moment that you start the upgrade after that you do not need architect anymore same goes for scientists you get 5% research speed these are super 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 important for progressing your account in a fast manner this may not seem like a lot for 5% research but some of the later researches are over a hundred days long so guys always ask for an appropriate title in the kingdom chat on the bottom of the screen whoever's giving out titles is going to need the location of your city which is at the top right here um, those are your coordinates it's going to save you a lot of speed ups by doing just these two things another best practice is do not let your hospital fill to the max so right now my hospitals have 375,000 troop capacity this doubles during the kvk event but you don't want to go you don't want to fill the hospital uh, because if you get into a fight after that even if it's against barbarians and things of that of the pve nature right uh, you're going to get dead troops and dead troops you never want you never ever ever want your troops to die if you can help it because it takes a lot more time and resources to train new troops than it does to heal troops that land in your hospital so as a best practice never let your hospital fill to the max in a similar vein you do not want to get into pointless fights with other players in your home kingdom 
this is a waste of resources it's a waste of troops that you could save for kingdom versus kingdom event uh just unless you can unless you absolutely have to do not get into pointless fights it's it's a waste of everybody's time and money and resources finally uh, an obvious best practice is to log in every single day and do these daily objectives when you get to these certain milestones you get free resources free speed ups free equipment free everything right and when you complete your dailies you're going to get a free golden key a free crystal key and you're also going to get a free sunset canyon attempt you're going to get a free magic box which can give you all sorts of really good items you'll also get universal epic commander sculptures now your rewards at the end here may change depend on your city hall level which is why you want to get to city hall 25 as fast as possible but it goes without saying that you should do that plus every day that you log in you get free vip points and you get a free exclusive chest based on your vip level um you want to push vip 10 pretty quickly because that's the first time that, that you get a, a legendary commander sculpture every single day but either way even if you're getting even if you're at vip 8 or 9 you're still getting universal epics which you can use in the early game to your advantage and point number eight is going to come in the form of purchase advice okay so this is for those of you that are going to be low spenders you know free to play games are amazing right but a retail game for example a ps4 game or ps5 game whatever uh, those games cost anywhere from 50 to 70 dollars depending on what it is right and so if you're in the mindset of saying okay well i don't mind spending 50 or 70 dollars on this mobile game that i'm having a lot of fun with then there are some things that you should be buying with your first few dollars that you spend okay in terms of value the best value that you're going to get in the early game comes in the form of the 30 day gem supply which for ten dollars gets you 19,500 gems just to put that into perspective that is uh, almost a hundred dollars worth of gems for um 10 bucks right as long as you log in every single day there's also uh what's called the growth fund the growth fund will give you 81,000 gems for $15 again 25,000 gems is a hundred dollars right so 81,000 gems for $15 is insane value now of course you do have to get to City Hall 25 in order to get 81,000 gems if you purchase for example if I purchase the growth fund right now I will unlock the 5,600 um, City Hall reward and everything prior to that and then as I hit these next milestones, I will unlock it. So it's not like you have to wait until city hall 25 to get the best value. Uh, you can buy this whenever you want and you'll still get all these gems no matter what. But, um, if you want to wait until your city hall 24 or something like that, or 25, just to know that you're definitely going to hit that maximum value for the $15. Uh, and you're not going to like quit playing or something like that then you can go ahead and do that but the growth fund is an insanely good value um for the price it's just like you can't beat it so definitely if you're a low spender this is this is a really good place to spend 15 dollars as far as super value bundles go king's coronation is going to be the best value bundle that you can get and you can tell this because the lifetime purchase limit is one uh this goes all the way up to um this, there's a five dollar tier a ten dollar tier a twenty dollar tier a fifty dollar tier a one hundred dollar tier and that comes around three times so total it's 385 dollars um to maximum purchase the king's coronation but this is a really great bundle that you can get you can time this with an event called recharge rewards which i won't get into now but if you're looking on making purchases uh, you might want to wait until that recharge reward event comes around because you'll get bonus goods just for making purchases that you were planning on doing anyway and then finally as a low spender you can in fact get minamoto who is a legendary commander only obtainable by spending money uh you can get him to 5511 for somewhere around 30 dollars if you purchase the correct vip bundles uh and upgrade him correctly obviously um if you messed up your minamoto and you didn't get him to 5511 and you don't want to spend the three however much him hundreds of dollars it takes to get him expertise then i would just forget about it because um unless he's 5511 or 
expertise he's not really worth it a 5111 minamoto is not that useful or great so uh keep that in mind but again 30 dollars for a 5511 legendary is going to be a huge power bump in the early game and you'll still have use for him in the later game and with that being said this video was super long hopefully you guys got something really valuable out of it if you have any questions at all feel free to drop them in the comment section below i'll try to answer as many of them as i can as i mentioned earlier make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a video and of course if you made it all the way to the end of this make sure you drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel and the video a ton so please 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 go ahead and do that it takes just a fraction of a second my social media links are going to be in the description below where you can follow me on instagram Instagram, Twitter at, and discord make sure you go ahead and join my discord if you have a ton of questions about the game because that's an easier place to catch me you can just at me over there and it'll ping my phone and then I'll be able to see it whereas if you put comment on a video you basically have to wait until I log into YouTube and check my comment section I also have a twitch link down there make sure you follow me over on twitch for the next time that I live stream rise of kingdoms finally there's a link in the description below to download rise of kingdoms for free for your PC or your Mac and you may be wondering how I'm playing rise of kingdoms on my computer right now uh, but that's how I'm doing it it's a program called blue stacks it's absolutely for free it's my favorite way to play rise of kingdoms and you're going to experience uh, fewer crashes than if you were to play it on maybe an older phone so again absolutely free there's a link in the description below to download that and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace